All right, everyone, my name is Shanae Jones, and we are about to go live on Instagram. So, excuse me while I push the button. Oops, that was a camera, not a button. Let's not do that. Let's go to the live setting. I'm going to get it right. All right. <clears throat> Hello everyone, my name is Shanae Jones and this is KNKY which stands for Know the New Kinky You. I am your resident certified sex coach and we are here to talk about sex. I did a post recently, fairly recently, um, where we talked about what happens to your vagina when you stop having sex. And it actually got a lot of uh, feedback and and interaction so I'm appreciative of all of you who enjoyed the post and liked it and commented on it so just as a quick reminder because I, I, I want to make sure that I am addressing you I am live here and I am recording this live session here so that I can post it later on YouTube so if you miss it or want to go back and watch it you can always go to YouTube and watch it so subscribe to the channel at D-O-Y-O-U-K-N-K-Y so, Again, we're talking about what happens to your vagina when you stop having sex. And the segment is actually called Use It or Lose It, right? So, we've talked in the past about the health benefits of sex. We should all know, at least I hope you know, that there are known health benefits from better sleep to a stronger immune system. Uh, your mood gets boosted when you have sex, especially if you're having really, really good sex. Uh, you burn calories. It is exercise. But there are some changes and impacts to your body when you stop having sex, especially for an extended period of time. So, let me preface this by saying that there is nothing wrong for men or women for deciding to take a break from sex. You you have different things going on and you just want to take a break. It could be that you're not in a relationship at the moment, so you don't want to be physically intimate with anyone. Uh, you could just not be in the mood. It happens to us. It, you're not, we're not always driven by our, our sexual emotions. Uh, it may be that you're doing a spiritual cleansing and you know sex is something that you want to avoid so that you can purify yourself uh, even stress stress is a big factor on our libidos if you are stressed out and you got a whole bunch of different worries in your head about sex or about life excuse me sex is not going to be your main priority so low sexual desire is common in both men and women but don't get me wrong there are ways to improve it um working with a coach and helping to right size what it is that you are feeling the things that are going on in your life you can definitely definitely do something about it but again there's nothing wrong if you decide to take a break but when you take a break know that the part of your body that is most impacted by it is the female vagina. So, what we have to understand is that our vagina is our muscle for sex. And, or sorry, um, or is, a, is a sexual muscle. And sex is how we exercise that. So when we stop, you know, we lose some of the normalcy that we are, are, are kind of used to. So, it's just like going to the gym, right? When you are going to the gym on a regular basis, you know, after a while, it, you feel strong and you, you feel like, oh, I can do this. And then when you stop going for a while, you got to build that stamina back up. It happens with sex. Like, it's not going to be the same when you take a hiatus and you want to go back to it. So, I commented on the post that is still there, that when you have a vagina and you don't have sex and even with men it's a use it or lose it situation you know I'm not sure how many of you guys have ever worked for the government but you know when you have annual leave and you have um, what is it well oh, personal leave that 
at the end of the year, you lose that leave and the government's not giving it back to you. So you have to remember that if it's something that you want, it's something that you desire, then you need to use it. Now, sex is not just penetrative sex. You can still masturbate. You can still do self-pleasure and self-care so that you don't fall into the, the, the deepest of what we're about to talk about, which is what things happen when you start to not have sex for those extended periods. So, here's a myth that all of these women that call themselves born-again virgins, you're not. Uh, it doesn't tighten up like it was when you were a virgin. You don't grow your hymen back. It's nothing like that. You have your same vagina. Uh, it just will go through other changes, which we're about to talk about. Let's say that you have not had sex in a, in a long time. And long is relative because if you are used to having sex every day and then you go a month, two months, three months without sex, that could be a long time for you. Now, that might not be a long time for someone else, but time is always relative. So, let's just say that when you go to have sex again, that you may experience some discomfort. You may experience some pain as if you were a virgin, but it, that's not the case. What you really need to do is use lubrication and practice your patience. You know, go into it slowly, make sure that you're fully aroused, and I promise you that that's going to be something that I repeat through this live session. Uh, use lube, practice your patience, and be fully aroused. So, it also may take some more time to achieve an orgasm when you haven't had sex for a long period. Now, that's not the same for people that masturbate while they're on their celibacy, right? So if you are masturbating, then you may not lose that gratification and that sensation on how to pleasure yourself. Masturbation is still sex. So, but if you choose to let that penetrative uh, sex go, it may be harder for you to reachieve an orgasm. There can also be changes in your sexual response cycle. Now, we've talked about this. I have other videos on sexual response cycle. And there are those four phases, uh, desire, arousal, orgasm, and resolution. Now, I do have other YouTube videos on that subject, the sexual response cycle. If you want to go check that out and learn more, you can always go do that. And I think I mentioned that they're on YouTube. So, those videos are on YouTube. So, knowing your SRC, sexual response cycle, means that you're aware of how your body is responding in each of these different phases of the SRC, and you are in tune with your body. A lack of sex means that you may have to relearn your body's responses to sexual stimuli. You can see changes in your premenstrual symptoms. So, for instance, you may cramp more easily and it might be it might be a little bit more aggressive than it would normally be during your cycle so what happens is when you orgasm your orgasms create a contractive motion in your uterus and in your your vaginal lining so you know although it releases this great pleasure it can also reduce pain so understand that when you don't have that sexual release, when you don't have those orgasms, you may experience cramping more strongly during your cycle. It's also something where your vagina can shrink just a little bit. Now, mind you, the average vagina is probably about three and a half to four inches. So it's not anything that's like so elongated. We, our vaginas expand to accommodate, you know, whatever needs to go in there tampon penis baby you know we, we we expand to accommodate it now a shrunk vagina is not the same as the post i did on micro vagina but what it is is 
when you do go to re-engage with sex, you may experience pain and have to readjust yourself. Now, the answer again is to use lube, practice patience, and enhance that sexual arousal so that you are putting your body in the best position to enjoy where you are. A lot of foreplay, that sexual arousal is mostly built up by foreplay. I want to just take this second to do this disclaimer. Women are not like men when it comes to sex. Most men can think about it, have a strong wind blow by, and their penis gets hard like that. A lot of guys, not all guys. Women tend to take a little bit more attention, let's call it. A little bit more touchy-feely, kissy, rubby, sucky, all of that stuff in order to put them in that mental and physical space to be sexually aroused. So don't look at it as something that is a bad thing or women want and need to have that connection a lot of times, not all the time, sometimes women want to go in and get to it just like dudes do, but for the most part, most women want that intimacy, that, that foreplay, that affection to get them into that sexual state. So, another thing that can happen when you haven't had sex for a long time for, for women is that they may feel drier than normal or than they perhaps were previously used to. So, unlike the, the anus, which is not self-lubricating, the vagina is. And the vagina is usually moist at some point, even when we're not in a sexual state. So understand that it's usually got some type of lubrication going on. The lubrication is heightened when you are in a sexual state. So that's when you get all of the juicy wetness and all of that good stuff that everybody loves so much. When you're in that sexually heightened state, when you're not having sex for a while, then your natural lubrication can tend to dry up. So don't, don't be afraid or don't get scared if that's what happens. Going back to our mantra for tonight, use lube, be patient, and be fully sexual aroused. That way you can enjoy it as much as possible. From a mental and physical perspective, you may feel like you have lost your rhythm, forgotten everything that you knew when you re-engage in sex. And don't stress yourself out about that. It's like riding a bike. It will come back to you with time and practice and patience. So, as I usually close out the evening, I'm going to remind you that I am a certified sex coach through Sex Coach University and a member of the World Association of Sex Coaches. So I say this so that you can go look it up so that you know it's a real thing. And if you're ever interested in coaching services, all you have to do is send me a DM. I'm more than happy to answer some very general questions. But when we start talking about you and your specific needs, your specific issues, your specific questions, it really does benefit you to have a very interpersonal dialogue you know and I promise you there aren't many things that scare me and we can talk about how it is that we can work together to make sure that you're having your best sexual lives all right um follow me across all social media twitter facebook instagram of course everything is at do hello D-O-Y-O-U-K-N-K-Y. And if you found this even remotely interesting, please spread the word. Let people know so that they can benefit from what it is that I am trying to give the world, which is education on better sex. Right? Hi, babe. So, if you missed it, 
It'll be on the story for 24 hours. If you still can't make it, it will be reposted on YouTube. So go to YouTube, subscribe to YouTube, subscribe to YouTube, and visit the website. There's a link in my bio. I appreciate it if you go check it out. I will talk to everyone soon. Thank you very much. Talk to you.